Hey, this is Alpha for Shock's video guide and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the new interface features in Heart of the Swarm. Now, as many of you know, Heart of the Swarm was released on March the 12th, 2013 and it is the expansion pack to StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. It requires StarCraft II Wings of Liberty to play, but once you have Wings of Liberty installed, the two mesh with each other very well and you can um, switch between them very easily as we're going to see. So this is the main screen for Heart of the Swarm. As you can see, there's Kerrigan in the middle uh, doing some sort of animation. And we have our various tabs on the left to get us to different parts of the game. And on the right, we have a sort of new interface which shows us uh, some, some interesting features that are now in Heart of the Swarm. So at the top, we have, as we've always had, um, the number of people on Battle.net and uh, the number of games going on and so on and so forth, as you can see there. Um, and just beneath that, we have a scrolling banner of community and news events, which is uh, quite frequently updated. Um, and then beneath that, we have a list of chat channels, um, popular chat channels, channels you've been in before. And then if we scroll down, we have a bunch of featured groups. And as you can see, some of these groups are pretty, pretty big. Um, Husky Starcraft, over 25,000 members. Day9 TV, over 16,000 members. And these groups, um, you can join them just by, um, well, you can join the chat just by right-clicking and hitting join chat. You can open uh, the, the list of members. You can open the info of the group. You can open the news of the group and so on and so forth. Now, beneath that, we have Players Near You, which is a new feature introduced um, to show players who are, um, you know, on your network or geographically close to you. If you click it, it shows the people that are near you and it allows you to, um, you know, interface with them and, and you invite them to a party, add them to your friends, so on and so forth. Um, so then going down even further at the bottom, we have the new uh, sort of taskbar. Um, we have the menu, as always, which is now located in the bottom right corner next to the time. Um, we have the groups and clans. And this interface allows you to find various groups um, or clans. And this also allows you to, say, create a group or clan. So if you go to create group or clan, it brings up this window. And you first select whether you want to create a group or a clan. Um, as you can see from the little tooltip, groups don't have a member limit and you can join more than one group, whereas with a clan you can only join one clan and they have a member limit. Then it asks you to enter the name of the group. Um, it asks you to classify the type of, of group. Um, it asks you to specify the uh, privacy of the group. And then it asks you to choose a, a language. Now if you go to clan, it asks you for the name of your clan and then asks you for a clan tag which will be displayed in front of your name um, on the ladder and everywhere you go on Battle.net and again it asks you for your language. So as you can see clans and groups are definitely a pretty big feature that Blizzard has been pushing in Heart of the Swarm and they're very useful just for identifying yourself with that uh, community of friends or people who have similar interests to you. It can be very helpful to say join a group that you uh, are interested in and you might meet people that are uh, interested in similar things as you are looking for similar things. You could be joining some sort of coaching group, for example, um, maybe a practice partners group or people who are looking for a particular skill level of practice partners or a specific race. Um, or, of course, you could be drawn by a mutual interest in, say, Husky Starcraft or Day9. Um, so moving over to the left, at the very bottom, we have our uh, portrait, which is, of course, very similar. Uh, to what it was in Wings of Liberty. It's just located in an opposite part of the screen. If we click on that, we see the new window, which uh, shows our um, screen here. And we see uh, a summary of our stats. And we see um, a few tabs on the left. And also we see here uh, our levels. In Heart of the Swarm, you are now capable of gaining levels. And this has also transferred over to Wings of Liberty. Now, levels are basically um, things you earn by completing actions in the game. They can range from something as simple as constructing workers to killing units to um, building structures. And as you level up with a specific race, you can unlock various things in the reward section. 
As you can see, there are portraits, of course, that you unlock from winning a certain number of games. Um, there are decals that you unlock from uh, reaching a certain level or winning a certain number of games or so on and so forth. Um, there are different decals for each race, obviously. Uh, there are skins now that you can unlock for different units and for different um, buildings, as you can see here. Um, for example, the Supply Depot different skin is unlocked by reaching level 20 as Terran. Um, and once you do that, other players will see that your Supply Depots look different. They have this alternate skin and that can be really interesting to show which players have really invested the time into really leveling up the different races and unlocking all of the content. Also, there's space for more, so we can expect that Blizzard will be adding more and more of these skins in the future, and perhaps for more and more units as well. And then in animations, we have various dances that different units can do, and they can be unlocked by reaching particular levels with particular races. So we're just going to close that. Oh, one more thing that we should should check is um, the statistics um, page, which is pretty interesting in Heart of the Swarm because unlike in Wings of Liberty, um, well, unlike vanilla Wings of Liberty, we can now actually see some of the statistics. If we go to the ladder tab, we can see some of the statistics of our... Um, various matchups and various races so if we go to statistics we get a, a list of okay as protoss here is our record versus protoss terran versus Zergen overall from whichever season we want in heart of the swarm or wings of liberty in whichever um, matchup format we choose and we can also take a look at the map report which shows us a list of our statistics um, specific to each map with the same various options and this can be really helpful for pinpointing areas in which you are weak areas in which you are strong and areas in which you seem to be struggling against one particular um, race or on one particular map or against one particular strategy. So that can be really helpful. So now going over to the left tab, we have, um, of course, the campaign. And as you can see, you can select between the Wings of Liberty campaign, the Heart of the Swarm campaign, and the various challenge missions. That's very standard. We have matchmaking, which brings you to the ladder screen we now have the option to play unranked which does not affect your um, points or ranking on the ladder but has its own separate MMR and this is a good way for people who maybe are stressed by playing ladder or who want to try out some new strats or maybe off race they can try playing unranked to uh, blow off some steam or just get some practice time in there that's not going to affect their main ranking um, we have custom games which function very similar to Wings of Liberty uh, you can browse open games um, and so on and so forth. And then we have the arcade. Um, the arcade is also quite similar to how it was in Wings of Liberty, just uh, got an interface upgrade. We see the up and coming games here at the bottom. We see some of the top played games over here in the bottom right. Uh, we can check the open games to join lobbies that are currently open. And we can browse through the various maps by a variety of sorting um, filters and find a game that we want to play. We can bookmark games. Um, and we can take a look at the games we've recently played by clicking on the respective tabs or we can participate in fun or not um, which will find a game for us and then ask us to review it at the end of playing it so that pretty much sums up the interface changes in heart of the swarm the one last thing we should mention is that if you go to options and then into gameplay you can actually change the expansion from wings of liberty to heart of the swarm which will affect um, the level that matchmaking and custom games are played on. So if you want to play with someone who has Wings of Liberty only, um, you can go into your menu and switch your own copy to Wings of Liberty. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and feel free to check out our other videos. Um, we'll see you next time.